So in this episode, I want to play a game. Close your eyes for a minute and just imagine if Oprah came to you and wanted to have you on her show to promote what you have to offer. What would that do for your business? What would that opportunity do for you? Maybe right now you're thinking, wow, I would just blow up. I would just glow up and just be, everything would be perfect. But is that true? In this episode, we're going to be talking about, are you ready for a big opportunity? And we're going to talk about some things that you can do right now to get you ready. So in this episode, we're going to be talking about some things that you can do to get ready in your business so that when opportunities come by, you are able to capitalize. So I hope you're ready for this episode of Real Talk with TN. We start right now. Hey there, welcome to another episode of the Real Talk with TN podcast. This is a podcast dishing all the dirt on the realities of running a creative business. My name is Tian and I'm a designer, technical editor, and business coach. See, since leaving corporate almost a decade ago, I've been doing this amazing work full time. It hasn't always been easy, but it has always been totally worth it. Over the years, I've had the amazing opportunities to work with hundreds of makers just like you and tons of big brands. This has given me a front row seat to what it takes to be successful as a creative business. With this podcast, I'm drawing back the curtains to share with you the behind the scenes of the realities of what it's really like, what it takes to run a successful and fulfilling creative business. Welcome to the conversation. Grab a cup of tea or your favorite beverage. It's time for some real talk. So you're probably thinking you're ready. You're probably dreaming of your glow up, of hitting it big and being discovered. So often we daydream of the day we we will be discovered and strike it big. That day when Oprah or an industry leader will tap us on the shoulder with an opportunity that will change our whole lives. And while this is the dream, right? Are you actually prepared if a big opportunity comes along? Will you be able to capitalize on the opportunity or will it actually break your business? This isn't something we talk about a lot in business, but this is the reality of running a business. And the problem we see too often when a designer or a maker or a sewer or some creative entrepreneur, they hit it big and are not able to sustain the rapid growth. So take a look at your business right now. Would you be able to handle an extra 100 new customers? How about a thousand, 10,000 or a hundred thousand new potential customer? And we see this with brands that are spotlighted by influencers like Oprah and have to shut down because they don't, because they couldn't handle the attention and the rapid growth. We also see this in the fiber industry, like yarn companies that do kits and they blow up. They get talked about on a podcast or they get featured in a magazine or by some influencer and everyone want what they offer, but because they don't have processes and systems in place, they are not able to handle added new eyes and attention. They're not able to capitalize on this new opportunity, but instead of using it to grow, it instead forces them to shut down because they're not able to handle the demand. And that's the problem, right? When you don't have systems in place or a strong foundation, you won't be able to to handle the growth. And I talk about this a lot in my groups in Pattern Partnership and in the society. You know, my father was a builder. My father-in-law was a builder. And we, we see how they built houses, right? And when you lay the foundation, you don't pour the foundation on day one and then day two, you start building the frame. No, you have to let that foundation cure and harden. And I think for a lot of us as creative business owners, 
we're so joyful about our business and being able to do this thing that we love that we fail to put in those systems and those and those framework in place that will help us to grow that will help us to be able to stand firmly and to add on to it whereas a lot of times when we run when we're running these creative businesses we just keep adding on things adding on things without first let in one layer cure before we add in on and that's the key and i'm not saying to not pursue those opportunities and go after you know big brands and and collaboration but to make sure that you have a way to handle those opportunities that you have a way to make sure when someone comes to you you know that hey all these new eyes are coming on to my products, my services, what I offer, and I have a way to, to handle it. So here are a few things that you can think about right now before you even get those opportunities because guess what? They are coming. The key here is that you want to be ready. Okay, so the first thing you can do is think about how can you capture all those new eyeballs and the new exposure, right? So if Oprah came to you or some influencer came to you and they wanna spotlight you and you have all these people coming to your website and of course, most of them might not buy on that first time seeing you, how are you capturing those people? Are you expecting them to bookmark and remember to come back? Chances are they are not, right? So think about how you can create an email list right with a great lead magnet where folks can join and then keep up with what you have to offer so that you can nurture them so that they can get to know you more and more and eventually buy from you because when they first get to see you and see what you offer they might look but not buy right away but we want to be able to capture those new people and keep them in our circle so we can target them later so think about how you can capture those people. Maybe you can't sell to them right now because you just don't have the products or capacity, but are you set up to catch them so that you can reach them later instead of them just jumping off your website to never remember you again, right? So that's one thing you can think about right now, setting up in your business for opportunities that might come or for just your daily running up your business. And the second question is, do you have the capacity to handle that new exposure? Do you have enough product? Do you have a varied catalog? Or is your catalog varied in style and sizes and pricing? You know, look at your catalog and see, maybe you can't handle a thousand new sales, but do you have enough varied product in your catalog so that there's something for your perfect person to grab onto. Of course, you can't create something for everyone. That's not what I'm saying here. But do you have a strong representation of who you are in what's available? Can your audience see themselves in what you're offering? And point three, to piggyback off point two, the question here is, are you clear on who you serve? Are you clear on the problem you solve so that all those people who are finding you can immediately say, yes, this is for me or no, this is not for me. Because while it's great to have all those new eyeballs looking at your work, it's more important to have your right people, the people who get who you are and understand what you're about to, so, to self-select to be in your circle. And those who are not for you, you will be repelling them, right? Because that's what business is all about. You're attracting your right people and repelling those who are not for you. And you might be thinking, what's wrong with a lot of sales, even if those are not your ideal audience? Well, it's great for revenue, but not in the long term. The problem is that you will end up with more issues than you really care to have, right? Especially if you are, say, a designer. 
if these are not your right audience and they don't really jive with how you write and how you create, then you're going to end up with a lot of pattern support. You're going to end up with like people not really understanding. For example, when you go to like a site like Etsy and you see people buying pattern thinking they're getting whole items, right? Where it clearly says this is a pattern that you make the thing from and it's not an actual shawl or a pair of socks that you're getting, right? So that's how having the wrong audience can cause problem. Another thing is that not having your right audience, you're going to get a lot of complaints. You're going to get people doing returns. You're going to be getting requests for refund because they don't get it. They don't understand. They are not your right person. And that's why I would take 10 perfect ideal audience that really gets what I'm about and what I'm doing and who I'm for over a hundred not ideal audience who just don't get it, who are just not my right people. So that opportunity is coming. We're just going to put that out there. There is no doubt that the opportunity is coming. It might not be Oprah, but it is coming. If you haven't yet, start by building your brand, build your audience, share your value, get clear on your audience, figure out how to deliver on that promise with systems and with clarity so that you have a process in place for delivering to one or a thousand customers. That's it. Bye for now. Thank you for listening to another episode of the podcast all the way to the end. Everything we mentioned will be listed in the show notes at tnconnaughton.com slash real talk with TN. If you have questions on anything I've mentioned, or if you just want to book a coaching session, go to tnconnaughton.com slash contact us to get in touch. You got this.